Okay, hi guys. Um, today what we're going to be going through is just reaction rates. So um, we're going to investigate how to speed up chemical reactions and the major steps that we can take. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, we look at something known as the collision theory. Now I don't know, I doubt that I spelled that right, but I'm not an English student, so it works well. Okay, um, now let's have a look at what the collision theory is. Essentially, when you have um, particles, okay, so coming back to this equation, A plus B gives us C plus D. Um, what we're doing in the reaction rate is that we're basically wanting to create C and D faster. But we're not going to change the concentrations of C and D. They remain the same. Like, it's kind of like a race, you know. Um, if you think of a... Um, a you know 400 meters if you walk the 400 meters or you run the 400 meters you're still going to move 400 meters so um, you don't change a meter amount you just change the speed which is what um, we're kind of doing here where we're not changing how much um, stuff we're generating we're just changing how fast we're generating it okay so let's have a look at the very first thing that changes the reaction rates the first thing is called the temperature Temperature. Now, the reason why we have to know um, what causes the reaction rate to increase, and we also have to know why and understand the basic mechanisms behind it. So, the reason why temperature is so effective at increasing the reaction rate is that these two substances at the very start, say you don't have C and D yet, okay, say you don't have them yet, and so if you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the force or the speed. Of A and B. So A and B are going to be traveling really quickly because it's got more temperature. And so A and B are going to um, collide with greater forces. Oh, with greater forces. So um, we're basically going to create C and D. C plus D. Alright, so um, yeah, and that's going to happen quicker. Now, if we talk about it from the collision theory, we would say that collisions are more powerful. And we would also, so powerful collisions, powerful collisions, and they are able to um, overcome something known as activation energy. Okay, so the force of this collision is, over, is more successful, more successful at overcoming the activation energy of overcoming, overcoming activation energy. Activation energy... I don't know, I change it every time, AK, I'll just call it for today. Um, and so that's what the temperature does, okay? So in terms of collision theory, um, we just say that particles uh, collide at greater forces, all right? And because they're traveling faster, then they'll collide more, I suppose, okay? Now, the second thing that increases the rate of reaction is the concentration. So this is the second thing that you have to be aware of concentration. <clears throat> so the concentration is basically an easy way of just simply, simply the concentration is how much stuff you have. So if you put more and more of this, then the um, likelihood of those two colliding will be much greater. Okay, the probability of it will just go up. Okay, and so um, concentration will increase, increase um, Probability, because remember, all of this is in terms of probability. Probability of A and B colliding. Okay, so if you increase the chance of them colliding, then you're more likely to um, achieve a successful reaction. You're more likely to overcome the activation energy, which is essentially what... Um, causes the reaction to go forward and to change into C and D. Okay, so the concentration in terms of the collision theory says that because you have more A and B, um, you are able to increase your probability of collisions. Okay, so that's the second thing that um, is, is, is quite good at um, increasing the reaction rate. The third thing that we have Okay, now the third thing that we have is reducing, um, increasing, sorry, is um, increasing surface, increasing something known as the surface area to volume ratio. 
Now, what this is, is um, I'll just draw you two cases. Um, if you ever have a Panadol because you've got a headache or something, um, and you just have a soluble Panadol and you put it in your glass of water, um, and you, like, you just dump it in there, obviously the amount of water exposed to this Panadol is not too, like, it's not too flowery, okay, over there. If you do the same with a crushed piece of um, Panadol, so you've got bits and pieces of Panadol floating around, okay, what you'll find is that um, now there's a lot more access to water, and so this Panadol is able to um, interact with that water and therefore it actually reacts faster. So it dissolves faster into water. That's good to know when you have a headache next. Okay, so this is a low surface area to volume ratio and this is a high surface area to volume ratio. So let's have a look at what this means in, in terms of the collision theory. Basically, in terms of the collision theory, it means that um, your particles are more exposed to your water and therefore um, you've got greater chance of collision. Again, the chance of collision for this, you know, for the Panadol to interact with your water, the chance for this is higher here than it is there. Okay, so it's more likely the Panadol and the water are more likely to interact here than there. And that is what causes the reaction rate to go faster because you've got more of a chance of overcoming the activation energy. Okay, so the last one that we'll have to look at with the rates of reaction and increasing them is, and this is the fourth one, this is adding in a catalyst. Okay, now what a catalyst does, okay, um, before we talked about these thermochemical equations and energy profiles um, to be exact, energy profiles basically showed us that whenever you want to create um, some kind of, let, let's just say whenever we wanted to create C and D here um, and A and B, um, these energy levels of these two may not be the same. Well, they generally aren't, which is what causes this equation to happen. Okay. Um, so let's say in this case A and B are here, A and B, and let's say that C and D are somewhere below. So you've got C and D, and in order to convert A and B into C and D, first of all, um, these have to kind of like unjumble the atoms. So what you need to do is they need to scramble up to create C and D, because atoms cannot be destroyed nor can they be created. They can just be trans transposed and trans formed in, uh, transpose, yeah, into other, other kind of setups. So what you'll find is that you need to have something known as an activation energy in order to, in order to um, break apart the atoms in A and B and to finally create C and D. Okay, so this little bump here is no, referred to as the activation energy in this particular case. This is the activation energy. And what a catalyst does is, um, it will actually lower that activation energy. So it may just do it halfway, I'm not sure. Like it, it depends from the catalyst. And therefore, what this is, is a very nice, um, useful thing because now in order to convert A and B into C and D, you need less energy. And so if you need less energy, then it's more, there's a greater chance of that happening because you don't need to input as much energy in. Okay, so um, by decreasing the activation energy, you actually increase the speed of the reaction. Um, just remember with the catalyst, it will never get used up in your reaction. So it will, like, um, we'll have a look at this a little bit later, but yeah, it's not going to get used up in your reaction. And every equation has um, their own specific catalyst. Okay, with chemical catalysts, it's a little bit um, less uh, restricted than with biological catalysts. But essentially, it's pretty much speeds up the rate of reaction by decreasing the activation energy in both cases. Okay, so I hope that helped. I hope you understand now what the reaction rate is versus what the yield is. Yield is how much stuff you produce. Reaction rate is how quickly you produce it. Okay, so thank you for watching today's tutorial. And um, just have a look at all the other free stuff on YouTube that I have. And check out the website as well. It's www.vcetution.com.au. Catch you later.